from our right-hander, Brooke Gaines. Gaines in her first start of the day, or first start of her career, rather, here in Nacogdoches. Quickly to an 0 and 2 count here. A 1 and 1 count. And that one's hit into center field and collected for the first out. As number four, hot for Baylor, sent that one into an easy catchable play into center field. Batting second, center field for the Baylor Bears, number 21. McKenzie Wilson. Wilson coming to the plate for Baylor has played in all four games and started all four games that Baylor's played in this season. They've come in to Nacogdoches with a 4-0 record as she chops that down the left uh, left line foul. Hot hitter here with a 538 average. Wilson is the hottest hitter of the Baylor Bears early season, uh, but they have plenty of power uh, s scattered throughout their starting nine as their first four have played and started in all four games and then they've got some different faces filling out five through eight and then rounding out the lineup is left fielder Strain who's also started and played in all four. Quickly in an 0-2 count as Gaines gets in front of Wilson. That one off the plate for the first ball of the at-bat. Wind's blowing back into the field right now. Could make home runs harder to get out. Hot. The batter before Wilson here is the only Baylor Bear in the lineup with a home run so far this season. The Lady Jacks slugger Shago Vaughn already has two to her name this season in their first weekend tournament. Last week in, in Monroe. As that one's off the plate. And the count now, two and two. The Lady Jacks pick preseason number one in the Western Athletic Conference. As they started their first weekend with a one and four record. Unable to get things going in Monroe as they look to find some consistency here. Foul ball just barely makes it behind the stands. <laughs> the Lady Jacks won the regular season in the Southland Conference last year as this count runs full. We're unable to win the tournament, but we have some new faces on the field on the defensive side of the ball for the Lady Jacks. Shea Govan and Cameron Middlebrook still playing first and short as we see the payoff pitch. And that one over the away dugout and foul. Tough battle here between pitcher and hitter. It's good experience for Gaines and her second batter in her first start getting an opportunity to learn how to battle in her early career as a Lady Jack. That one chopped at third, and that'll get past the glove of number eight, Emily Land. And the Bears will have their first runner on the base paths here in Nacogdoches. Batting third for the Baylor Bears in right field, 22, Anna Watson. Watson coming to the plate for Baylor. Now has an opportunity with one out on the board to advance her teammate into scoring position. The wind coming in even harder from center field towards home. It's going to keep the ball in the air a little longer as Wilson looked to take off from first, but a good job by Gabby Garcia behind the plate to keep her there at first base. The 0 1 pitch, the bunt. Falls behind catcher Gabby Garcia as the count now 0-2 again for the second Baylor Bear in a row. That ball just barely caught the barrel and drew it off to the left. Wilson takes off. That throw not in time as 
Gabby Garcia. Just a little slow on the throw down to second as Lusk standing on the second base bag, unable to lay the tag in time. Hope Lusk, one of those two new infielders for the Lady Jacks this season. She's a freshman out of Mansfield, Texas. And her counterpart over at third base, Emily Land, a sophomore out of Deer Park, Texas, getting the start at third this season. That one fouled back against the netting. The count now two and two. Gannis looks to the dugout to get the sign, and that one's popped high as three Lady Jacks will run for it, and Gannis able to collect. The Lady Jack pitcher able to record the second out as Wilson stays at second base. Opportunity to get out of the inning here. Two outs, runner in scoring position though. A really good first inning here for Gaines. That one off the plate as umpire behind the plate calls it as strike one. Garcia pops up quick to make sure Wilson stays at second. That rise ball kept rising. Didn't get Benford to swing. Just a little high. The outfield for the Lady Jacks in left field, we have Lexi Benson, center field, Michaela Berkland, and right field, Maddie Nguyen. As another young part of the lineup for the Lady Jacks, as that one off the plate for ball two. That one popped foul over the press box. As Benford steps into the batter's box, Benford comes into the game with a 364 batting average. And her 11 at bats has three runs off of four hits, one double, Strike three. and two RBIs. And that'll sit down the Baylor Bears for the first half of the inning. We'll be back with more Lady Jack softball after this. Huh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more in car insurance. I didn't know that. Well, did you know that former pro football player Icky Woods will celebrate almost anything? 44. Woo! 44, that's me! Get some cold cuts. Geico. Some cold cuts. Get some cold cuts. Hey, cover girls. It's time for a fresh start with new clean fresh skincare weightless water cream supercharged with true clean cactus water for 72 hours of hydration. It works. New clean fresh skincare from CoverGirl. The all new Tundra. Toyota. Let's go places. On ESPN Plus. Welcome back to the SFA softball field here in Nacogdoches, Texas, as the Lady Jacks get their first at bat here against the Baylor Bears. On the mound for the Bears, number 24, Orm, as her pitch, first pitch comes in off the plate uh, for ball one. Hope Lusk on the plate for the Lady Jacks. 
so far in this season. She's started and played in all five games. And batting a 125 early in the season as Coach Nicole Dixon hopes for her to get her season started off hot here against the Baylor Bears at home. Lumberjacks wearing the white on white tonight with pinstripes. I think this is a new uniform for the Lady Jacks. With the transition to the Western Athletic Conference over the last year, most teams had to get new jerseys as they had the Southland logo um, embossed onto those. So gave them an opportunity to get a little upgrade in uniforms as well. As Lusk has yet to see a strike here. Orm comes into the game with a 1.93 ERA, has made one appearance, started one game, and has won that game. In her 4.2 innings pitched, gave up four hits, one runs. That one run was earned as that one comes in for strike one. Lusk hits that one foul down the first baseline, hitting her first base coach, Morgan Spearman down that first baseline, flicking that away with her foot. Number three, Ryan Trocum playing first base for the Baylor Bears. As that one's chopped towards short, and Lusk is safe at first. A good job of running that out as shortstop Bauer was unable to collect cleanly. And that'll get the Lady Jacks on the plate with zero outs. And a big bat for the Lady Jacks coming to the plate. Good hustle there from Lusk off the bobble. Uh, okay, so just specifying what the error was after she fell and it. Gotcha. Batting second at first, number 12, Shea Govon. Shea Govon. One of the most highly acclaimed players in the Western Athletic Conference, getting preseason player of the year coming to the plate. Already has two home runs to her name this year. The wind, like we mentioned in the top of the first, blowing hard from center field towards home. So she's going to put a little extra oomph behind it if she wants to get this one out of the park. There is some confusion as Orem does reset in the circle. It looks like she might have a problem with her contacts, maybe, if she's wearing them. The home plate umpire going out to talk to her. Definitely something with her eyes. <laughs> looks like she's getting it worked out. As Lady Jack... Softball field is packed out tonight for this first home matchup. We've got balloons around the stands uh, for our experience group. Uh, Baylor has traveled well out here to Nacogdoches as well, and lots of young fans here in Nacogdoches tonight to see this highly anticipated matchup between the SFA Lady Jacks and the Baylor Lady Bears. The experience is out here in force tonight. Now Shea Govan. Finally ready to see the first pitch to her as that one comes across the plate as strike one. Govon leading the Lady Jacks in batting average so far this season. Zadie Lavalle is behind the plate for the Baylor tonight. As that one into the knees for ball one. Govon, one of the two highly touted players on this Lady Jack team, really a roster full of uh, strength in their returners as Gabby Garcia got all whack preseason nominations as well. Um, Cassidy Wilbur, uh, the pitcher for the Lady Jacks, who is not seeing action tonight, at least to start the game, is the other Lady Jack with preseason accolades, winning the Western Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Year preseason as well. Shea Govon sends that one into right field, and that'll get past the glove as now Lusk will go to third and is rounding third from the wave from Nicole Dixon. And Shea Govon gets to third base as she gets a 
RBI triple at her first plate appearance here in Nacogdoches, and the Lady Jacks take a 1-0 lead. Stand-up triple makes it all the way to the wall. Wow, in the hustle from Lust, she makes it all the way home. Really good at bat there from the Lady Jacks as Shago Vaughn, the batter that you don't want to pitch to, makes you pay there. She doesn't get it over the fence like she does most of the time, but nevertheless, she's showing that she's got power and accuracy where it needs to be when it needs to be there. And now Gabby Garcia, a great bat to follow up Shago Vaughn coming to the plate as she sees... Still no outs here for the Lady Jacks. That one chopped down third, and it'll stay fair. The throw down to first base, and that'll be the first out for the Lady Jacks in the inning. Mackenzie Bennett coming to the plate now for the Lady Jacks. Runner still in scoring position as the Lady Jacks look to do more damage here in the bottom of the first. That one chopped back. That one into the hands as Bennett chops that foul for ball or for strike two rather. Yep, she got jammed a little bit on that one. Bennett shows bun early. We'll pull that back to foul off her third straight. That one going over the press box. Benford made a really good play over at third on the last out. That ball rolling down the foul line, able to keep it fair. She knew she'd be able to beat the runner at first, able to record the first out for the Lady Bears. As Shea Govan will come home, and she will get home standing as that's now two runs for the Lady Jacks here in the bottom of the first inning with just one out on the board. Govan scores easily on that pass ball. And now Bennett with two strikes on the board, one ball to her name as well. With no one on the base pass, now looking just to get on board here for the Lady Jacks. So she swings past that one for strike three. And that'll be the second out of the inning. I'll tell you what, the Lady Bears needed that one as they've fallen behind two to zero here in the bottom of the first. They've been self-inflicted wounds as that pass ball got Shea home. And now Cameron Middlebrook, shortstop for the Lady Jacks, coming to the plate. She takes strike one as that one came in quickly. The yeah, one pitch. Chop back towards the pitcher. That one will get under the glove of Warren, but fell... Fielded well by the second baseman, and that'll be the third out of the inning. The Lady Jacks score two in the bottom of the first, and we'll take a lead into the second inning. We'll be back with more college softball after this. If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has a new class of travel card for you. Introducing Venture X. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. 
Plus receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? There's a lot that could be said about the new RDX. Could be. America's most reliable network is going ultra with Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband now in many more cities so you can do more. Hey, it's Mindy. Downloading a movie up to 10 times faster than before. Oh, is that the one where the mom becomes a... Yep. I knew it. Let's work off-site. Public Wi-Fi? No thanks. 5G Ultra Wideband is faster and safer. And what's this? 5G internet for your home and business. Just plug and play. See ya, cable. 5G Ultra Wideband is now in more and more places. Verizon is going ultra, so you can too. This empire, it's going to crumble. Panthers Wild, Friday on ESPN+. The Baylor Bears is number 44, Josie Bauer. Lady Jack's playing in front now, looking to keep it that way. Bauer takes strike one as she comes in in the five spot as she'll send that one out to left field. And Lexi Benson able to get underneath it for the first out of this second inning. Benson only had to move a little bit back to her left there to catch that ball. As I imagine that neon green ball is pretty easy to see on this black night nice sky. And now, Ryan Trocum coming to the plate. Trocum will get her first look at Brooke Gaines, as Gaines allowed one hit in the top of the first. But the rest of the defense was able to keep the Baylor Bears off of the score sheet as Trocum takes strike one. First pitch fouled off to the left. That one chopped towards third base and easy enough for Emily Land who didn't have to move from her spot. As the Lady Jacks making the defense look easy right now is now LaValle coming to the plate, the catcher for the Bears. Weak contact there led to an easy catch for the third baseman Emily Land. Gaines with the 0-0 delivery. Gets that one just off the plate for ball one. That one just high and outside of the zone for ball two. LaValle. The second best hitter for these Baylor Bears has only started uh, two games here for Baylor. Uh, batting 500 in her four at bats, has scored three runs on two hits, and has one RBI to her name. That one misses again. Now they count 3 0 as Gannis just needs to find the plate here. The 3-0 pitch. Chopped in between second and first, and that'll be collected in right field by right fielder Matty Nguyen as Baylor now with a two-out runner on first. Stop is made out there in right field to keep the runner at first base. The designated hitter, Selman, coming to the plate. Batting 167 so far this season and her six at bats has scored two runs off of one hit one of those being a double as that one's popped high Garcia will move to the netting and that'll come into the stands for strike one that win that's moving into the field carried that ball back into the bleachers Come 
Whatever it is, okay, I'll do it. Wait, <laughs> yes. That one thrown to second. That is an out at third. And the Lady Jacks get out of the inning as they catch the runner stuck in between first. That pitch caught the top corner for strike one. Land chops that towards first base coach Morgan Spearman. Spearman able to get out of the way of that one. As the count now 0 and 2. Spearman's been playing a little bit of dodgeball over there tonight. Spearman, the assistant coach for the Lady Jacks, as coach Nicole Dixon down the third base line. Very successful duo here in Nacogdoches in their tenure with the Lady Jacks. Hope to continue that in the new conference here for the Western Athletic Conference. As that one ended the knees, the count now even at two balls and two strikes. That one just barely missed hitting land, just a few inches away from the jersey. Orm with the 2-2 pitch. That one chopped towards second, and another good field by the second baseman. Hot as she's able to get the second out here in the inning. And now, Michaela Berkland coming to the plate. A couple of tough, tough plays made by the Lady Bears second baseman. Betting third in the inning is center field, number 14, Michaela Berkland. Emily Hot, a sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. As that one's chopped back towards Orm, and that one in and out of the glove. And she is safe at first as a good job of running that one out by Berkland. The Lady Jacks have capitalized on two dropped infield opportunities. As now, Maddie, Maddie Nguyen coming to the plate with an opportunity to keep the Lady Jacks alive here in the bottom of the second inning. It looked to me like Orm played that ball a little too a little too lazily. Thought that it was just going to be an easy into the glove and over to first. Ended up being not so easy. Nguyen shows bunt early. The 1-0 pitch. Chop back, and that'll even the count at one ball and one strike. Berklin getting instructions down the first baseline from Coach Spearman. And LaValle just walking back to the center circle with Orem just to have some discussions about the pitches. As Orem now talking to the first base umpire. In. The designated hitter. Uh, she pops that one foul. Selwyn, a junior out of Lufkin, Texas, as this is a homecoming for her. Lufkin, just 30 minutes or so down the road from Nacogdoches. Getting an opportunity to come and play in front of some of her hometown family and friends. Count now two and two. As Brooke Gain has done a good job on the mound so far for the Lady Jacks here in the third inning has kept the Baylor Bears scoreless so far. A really tall task to ask of a freshman pitcher who's come in and so far done what she's been asked to do. Full count now. That one in at the knees. Right 
Selling comes into this game batting 167, and her six plate appearances has two runs off of one hit and one double. That one hits sharp towards second, and that one corralled by second baseman Hope Lusk. It almost looked like Hope caught that ball in her wrist before it made its way into her glove. And now Taylor Strain coming to the plate for the Bears. We'll get her first look at Brooke Gaines. That one outside for ball one. It's been a tough ask out there for second basemen on both teams tonight. We saw the second inning where Baylor's second baseman, Emily Hot seemed to make every play as that comes in for strike one. And now Hope Lusk for the Lady Jacks has made a couple plays on the defensive side for the Lady Jacks as well. Gaines gets a big swing there from Strain. Is now the count one and two. Taylor Strain's a freshman out of Robinson, Texas. Her second year with the Bears, taking that freshman classification from a red shirt as she fouls that one back to stay alive. Gaines with the one-two pitch. That one chopped back again and Strain doing a good job battling to stay alive here. Fouling off balls that she doesn't necessarily think she's going to barrel into a playable area but able to get contact to stay at the plate to see another one. Gain is forcing a lot of weak contact from the Lady Bears hitters. That one off the plate. Now the count even at two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 two -two pitch uh -oh. sent towards center. That one going to be playable as that one's caught by the Lady Jack center fielder, fielder Michaela Berkland. And that'll be the second out here in the third inning. A nice catch there from Berkland as she had to travel almost back to the warning track there, but made the play. We've talked about the wind coming from center field towards home plate, and we saw it help the Lady Jacks there holding that one up in the air. As you heard some moves from the bleachers below us as that one came off the bat, but Berkland able to get underneath it for the second out. That one bounced in for ball one. That one just off the plate for ball two. I'll tell you, that pitch could have gone either way. Lady Jack third baseman, Emily Land, playing a good three or four feet in front of the base as that one comes in at the elbow. Emily Hot able to get out of the way of that one. As hot. And a 3 0 count. We'll leave the bat on the shoulder here and make Gaines find the plate. And she does. Similar spot to that second strike, or the second ball, rather. As the count now 3 and 1. And Gaines is working her way back in this one. The 3 1 pitch. Chopped foul over the way dugout. And we'll see another one between these two. Hot starting to feel the heat a little bit here as the count has made its way to full. 3-2 count here in the top of the third inning. Two outs on the board. 
Hawk going to have to get this ball on the ground or over the fence to keep this inning alive. She chops that to third, and that one retrieved and sent over for the final out. That's three more sat down by the Lady Jacks as we head to the bottom of the third inning. The Lady Jacks still with Orem just misses the outside of the plate there. The count now two and two. We've seen that one called both way to this evening. Lusk doing a good job battling here against a really good Orm. That one inside the count now full three balls and two strikes. Man, those white jerseys of the Lady Jacks look good under the lights tonight. That one inside for ball four. And Lusk doing a good job of battling to get on the base paths again. And now Shea Govan coming to the plate. And you got to make a decision here. Do you want to pitch to her or do you want to get her on base as well and give Gabby Garcia two runners on base with zero outs here in the bottom of the third? Good job there by Lusk of quickly making her way to first base as if that pass ball had gotten further away from the catcher, she could have taken second. Shea Govan starting off the night, night hot, sending that ball past right fielder Watson as that one misses for ball one. Fans still coming into this ballpark in Nacogdoches as there's not many seats left to find. The 1-0 pitch. Check swing by Govan and a good one there as that one now 0-2. I don't think Govan's going to let another one like that get by her. I think she was a little late on her swing maybe, but able to recognize it was high. And now ahead in the count, two balls and zero strikes. As that one barreled into left, and that line drive caught, and that'll send Lusk back to first. As you heard the excitement from the crowd as that one cracked off the bat, but that line drive went straight to the glove of left fielder Strain, and now Gabby Garcia coming to the plate. Hardest hit ball of the night there from Govan, but unfortunately made his way right to the left fielder. Govan showing that she can hit to either side of the field. As if that one just squeezed past... We could have seen the speedy Lusk get around back to home. As that one, almost over the glove of first baseman. As LaValle tried to send that down the line to Trocum. Trocum doing a good job to collect and not let it get past. Another one inside for Morm. Count now 2-0. Last year, Garcia followed to go Vaughn throughout the lineup, and that duo was dangerous throughout their non-conference and Southland season. As you would see teams put Govan on base, and then Garcia with a great job of bringing her home time and time again, able to really make that one-two punch tough to pitch around. As she's looking to get her season started off hot here. In Nacogdoches. Counting out 3 0. As that one was always going to stay on the shoulder. And Orem found the zone for strike one. Still a hitter's count here with three balls and one strike. Swing and a miss, strike two. As the count now full for. The Lady Jack catcher. Things get a little bit more tough now for Garcia. Let's see who wins this battle. The 3 2 pitch. Chopped into right field, and that one into the glove. Lusk back to first. 
As now two outs on the board here in the third inning for the Lady Jacks. And one runner on base with Mackenzie Bennett coming to the plate. Mackenzie Bennett steps in looking to do some damage. That one high and out of the zone for ball one. That one fouled off for strike one. That one in the dirt. The count now two and one for Bennett. Bennett gets a sign from Coach Dixon. The wind has died down a little bit, but big swing from Bennett for strike two. Now the count, two balls, two strikes with two outs on the board here in the bottom of the third inning. Lady Jack's looking to advance that runner beyond first base here. To do that, this ball is going to have to find dirt or grass or go over the fence. Definitely one of those three. As that one fouled back, and Lusk will head back to first base. Orem, battling against this Lady Jack team, has played a pretty good game. As that one off the plate, Lusk is on the move, and the ball's going to get there. Did the tag get there as well? And that's the third out of the inning. The Lady Jacks leave the batter at the plate as we head to the fourth inning. The score is still 2-0 here in Nacogdoches. We'll be back with more Lady Jack softball after this. This glove all the way over to first base before finally making its way back to second. And now number 22, Anna Watson coming to the plate. Watson, a sophomore out of Hewitt, Texas. Has an opportunity here to advance her runner to scoring position. As the runner's thrown out at first, but the runner will advance to third. Lady Bear is trading out there in order to move the runner to third base. It looked like the home plate umpire made some sort of ruling or designation at the plate. Maybe catcher's interference, but that one he moved. Maybe it was batter's interference. Either way, we have one out on the board, and Wilson standing on third base. Baylor's head coach came out to dispute the call just for a second and moved past it. Is now with one out on the board, number 41, Benford, coming to the plate with a runner standing on third base. Just needs to get this one really in the air to the outfield as she hits that one hard enough to hit it into Lufkin, I think, but that one will land foul. A moonshot there from Benford, but in the wrong direction. Baylor started off their year playing in Natchitoches, Louisiana. They played UT Martin, Northwestern State, Chattanooga, and Arkansas Pine Bluff. Coming out with four wins there. As the only game that was close was against UT Martin, their season opener, 8-6 to six win on Friday. Beat Northwestern State 5-0, to zero, beat Chattanooga 10-5, to five, and beat Arkansas Pine Bluff 10-0. to zero. The count now, 1-2 and two here. As after this quick trip to Nacogdoches, they will spend their weekend 
at home playing against Oregon, who's traveling to Waco. Those games can be found on Big Ten, Big 12 Now Network and ESPN+. Plus. Oregon, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Waco. It would be a fun Pac-12, Big 12 matchup. As that one off the plate. And the count now, two balls, two strikes. Another hard hit ball. That one will end foul. The count stay in two balls, two strikes. The 2-2 two -two pitch. That one just misses inside. The home crowd doesn't agree with the call, but that'll run the count full. Three balls and two strikes. I'll tell you what, Carl, I thought that was close enough to sit her down. I would have to agree with that, but we may be seeing it through some purple lenses. So we'll give her the benefit of the doubt, and she did a good job of holding off on that one to stay alive in this at bat. That one hit hard into right field as Nguyen unable to get underneath it, and that'll bring one run across. And the Bears cut their deficit in half off of that ball that bounces off of Nguyen's glove. It's been hard. It seemed to be hard to find the ball up in the sky, maybe in these lights here in Nacogdoches tonight. I was just going to say, it looks like she had a little bit of trouble finding that one as she initially made her way back towards the wall before coming back in and towards the first base line. Not in time. The wind also may have a factor pushing it around a little bit. As the score now 2-1 here in Nacogdoches. And a runner on third base. The Bears starting to swing more, able to figure out what Gainus is going to do. Count now one and one. Another ball fouled over the visiting dugout. As Baylor is seeing Gainis the second time through the lineup, able to find their pitches, unable to get the center of the bat to him yet. But they're starting to work out Gainis' pitches here, and we'll see if they can dial in here as we move through the middle innings. That ball off the plate, and the count now two balls, two strikes. This home crowd here for the Lady Jacks has been pleased with the last few non-called strikes. That one chopped towards second. And they'll give up the run, and that'll be the game tire there as a good RBI from number 44. As this game now tied here in Nacogdoches. Two outs on the board. And now a fresh game here with Ryan Trocum coming to the plate. A good job by Lusk there just to get her body behind the ball. Able to at least get the out at first and get the Lady Jacks one out away from getting back to the dugout. That one chopped foul, and that'll land on top of the way away dugout. Emily Land giving chase. The 
one one pitch. Just missing the zone for ball two. We see Ryan Trocum kind of running through the batter's box as if she were to slap. We haven't seen her swing at it yet. Is the Orm quickly finding the zone on the inside half for two strikes against Bennett. Lady Jacks have a nice one, two, three combo here with Bennett, Middlebrook, and Benson in this inning. Looking to get back on top. That ball found the same spot three times, and that's the first out here in the bottom of the fourth. Coming up to that, number 15, Cameron Middlebrook. Cameron Middlebrook coming to the plate. Lady Jack shortstop. Her second opportunity to see pitches from Orm. As Warren pitching to the same spot again, this time just with the left-handed batter. And she'll get strike one. That one misses outside. You got now one-on-one. One. If you're just coming into the game, the Lady Jacks took an early 2-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning. Off of a stand-up triple from Shea Govan. And then a pass ball bringing Govan home for the second run of the inning. And Baylor Bears, as that one's hit hard into center field. And not hard enough as center fielder Wilson able to get over to make the play for the second out. The Baylor Bears tied the game up in the top of the fourth inning. Off of some good base running and hitting from their lineup. But it's now... Benson. Here in the bottom of the fourth, score 2-2 two, two with Lexi Benson coming to the plate. Man, that last ball could have been more perfectly in the gap, but the speedy center fielder from the Lady Bears was able to make her way over there. Benson checked her swing there, but not enough as home plate umpire calls strike one. Now quickly in an 0-2 count. The 0-2 pick. Seven's in left, one's in right. Medeiros playing right field for the Lady Jacks. We'll move seven. Maddie Nguyen over to left field. LaValle comes into this game batting 143. She's just got one hit to her name. It is an RBI. Uh, she sends that one sky high. And that's going to look like it's going to land over the away dugout. That'll even the count at two balls, two strikes. Again, with that wind initially off the bat, I thought that might have a chance to sneak its way into the field, but it ends up being pushed way, way out. Brooke Gaines in for her fifth inning of action as that one's chopped back. And that'll keep LaValle here at the plate. The count now three and two. The Lady Jack faithful out in force tonight, including some shirtless fans and out beyond center field with numbers painted on their chest. 
It's never too early in Nacogdoches to paint up for a game as LaValle will make her way to first base after being walked. It looks like we have another change here as we will have a pinch runner, number six, coming into the game for LaValle. Number six, Grace Powell. The freshman out of Crawford, Texas, will take her spot over at first. She's trying to get some speed on the base pass here for the Bears with no outs here in the top of the fifth. Selman coming to the plate for the Lady Bears. Now with a runner on first and no outs on the board. Has an opportunity to spark some offense here, or continue the offense rather from the top of the fourth inning. She shows Bunn early. We'll see if she keeps it there, and she does. Pops it high back to the pitcher, and that'll be an unproductive out for Selman. A good job by Gaines to get it back underneath the ball. Generally when you bunt, Carl, you want the ball to go towards the ground and not towards the sky. That one probably not what Selman had planned. But with two outs still to go here, still some room for strain here coming to the plate to do some damage. As she shows bunt as the ball comes in just off the plate, the count now 1-0. and Gaines' last two pitches coming in high. And if you're trying to bunt, you got to get over it. And that one chopped a short. Middlebrook gets it to second, and the double play not able to be turned in time as they get the lead runner at second out. A good job by Middlebrook to flip that over. Lusk just unable to get it over to Shago Vaughn in time. And now with two outs on the board, a good job by the Lady Jack defense to put the Bears in a situation where they can't just find some space or hit it hard into the outfield and at least make a productive out now. Anything you do has to be in play. A bang, bang play over there on the back end of that double play. First base umpire gives it to the runner. Number four, Emily Hot coming back to the plate for her third time seeing Gaines. As she fouls that one off. The 0-2 pitch off the plate, trying to get hot to swing, and Garcia sends that down the first baseline, and Govan doing a good job to keep that in play. The count now one and two. I believe that pitch was a called was called to go be outside as they were looking to pick off the Lady Bears runner either at first or second. That one chopped into the gap, and that'll be in play. As that throw is offline to third and will bounce off the dugout, the Lady Jacks able to keep it in front of them. Stand up double for the Baylor Bears. Third baseman Emily Land is lucky that that ball had a good bounce and came right back to her or else we might be looking at a 3-2 ball game here. Dangerous situation here for the Lady Jacks with two runners in the scoring position. Not far away from getting out of it, though. Early in the game, Gaines was doing a good job of pitching to soft contact. We'll see if she can get back to that here. This one off the plate. As number 21, Wilson, coming into the batter's box. Wilson hit a double in her last plate appearance. As that one finds the zone, even the count at one ball, one strike. The one one pitch off the plate, and a good job of Garcia just getting her body in front of that to keep it 
in play. The Bears have speed on third and second. So anything even in the shallow outfield could get them both in as that one hit hard towards the away dugout. Interesting here, Michaela Birkeland, our Lady Jack center fielder, playing a little bit to the left as opposed to dead away center as if they're expecting a hit towards the left field side here. And that one going back to the wall, that'll land in play and that'll bring home two Bears. And the play at third, not made in time and that is safe. A triple for number 21, Mackenzie Wilson, the sophomore out of Long Beach, California. And that has opened it up here in Nacogdoches. Two runs come across the plate as Baylor now leads 4-2 here in the top of the fifth inning. And that's going to be it for Brooke Gaines as... She's done a really good job here in her first start as a freshman, and that'll bring in number 27 for the Lady Jacks. Sophie Hannibus, a sophomore out of Fort Worth, Texas. We'll see what Hannibus has for us here as she warms up. That last play at third base was close, to say the least. Wilson has speed, and we saw it there. She was able to get all the way around the base paths. And just as you said, we saw Berkland kind of shading towards the left side of center field. And that is exactly where the ball went, all the way into the corner of left field. That's where Wilson's second at bat went as well. That one um, forcing a diving play by Lexi Benson. was unable to corral it, but that's sparking the offense in the fifth inning, or the fourth inning rather, now here in the fifth as Wilson is showing us her gritty on the third baseline. Just had a camera shot. Now number 22. Anna Watson coming to the plate. Lady Jacks really need an out here. Good stop there made by the catcher, Gabby Garcia. Keeping the ball in front of her. Sophie's first pitch in the dirt. The 2-0 pitch. Finds zone as Hannibus will find the first strike of her outing. The count now 2-1. and one. As that one's in the left field. That'll bounce in front of left fielder number 7. Matting win. And that'll be another... Runner on the base paths here for the Bears here in the top of the fifth. Now at the plate, number 41, Leah Finford. That'll bring home Wilson to extend the lead here, 5-2. to two. Well, on the bright side, there are no longer runners in scoring position. Always the optimist is that one. Just off the plate for ball one. That one comes in to even the count of one ball and one strike.
Binford. Showing bunt early. She'll pull that back as Hannibus unable to find the zone. The count now two and one. Big swing and a miss as Garcia sent the ball down to second and would have been in time if Middlebrook or Lusk were covering the bag. Neither there in time and now. Number 22, a little shaken up there at second base. Watson with an awkward slide there. As the umpires just giving her a second to walk it off. Number seven coming in a pinch run for the Baylor Bears. Casey West, freshman out of Liberty, Texas. Of a handful of substitutions throughout the Baylor Bears lineup as number 12, Kendall Cross, is now playing first. We have just number four, Emily Hot, still playing second at short. Can't quite see the number as... That changeup comes in for strike one. Lady Bear is pitching with the lead now. Another changeup, and that'll find the zone for strike two. Sydney Colazos coming into the game as well. Piazza's playing third base as swing and a miss, strike three for Land. That'll be the first out of the inning for the Lady Jacks. Land caught chasing a little bit there as that ball was outside. Seeing a little bit of different pitching from Benford. Another change up there. Coming in for strike one. As Michaela Berklin coming to the plate. That one off the plate. The count now one and one. that one. Chopped foul down towards the home dugout. Not much power behind it. First base coach Morgan Spearman not having to dodge that one. As we will see a new batter coming for the Lumberjacks on deck as swing and a miss on that one. As that's strike three for the second out of the inning. And now number 23 coming to the plate. Alex DeBose. DeBose, a sophomore out of Magnolia, Texas. Getting her first action of the game. Coming in for Maddie Nguyen. Both played for Magnolia High School, coming to SFA in the same year. Former high school teammates now. Teammates here in Nacogdoches for the Lady Jacks. As Benford steams that one in for strike one. Benford looking like she's bringing a little bit more speed to this game.
DuBose swinging just in front of that for strike two. Benford hoping to sit down her third batter in a row. As she'd like to see the minimum here in her first pitching outing in Nacogdoches. The 0-2 pitch, off the plate for ball one. Benford seems to have a little bit more of a jerky motion than the first Bears pitcher, leading to some out. Seen from, from these late jacks so far. I'll tell you what, they got off to a hot start, getting up 2-0 uh, early in the bottom of the first, thanks to some mistakes by the Lady Bears, but it's been quick innings and no runs since then, and Baylor capitalizing in... Uh, the last inning now back up to bat here. I agree with what you said there that the Lady Jacks were able to capitalize on some mistakes that were made by the Bears in the first inning and ever since then the Bears defense has been pretty close to flawless as they've been able to not even let the Lady Jacks get on base for the most part and when they do they've gotten them thrown out attempting to steal. As that one is hit hard but foul. The count two and two here for Bauer. A couple of close calls in this game could have could be differently than how we're seeing it now, like the bang bang play that happened on first at the back end of the double play earlier in the game and the end of the triple in the last inning. That one chopped over to Hope Lusk. Able to corral it for the first out here in the sixth inning. Number 12 for the Baylor Bears coming to the plate. Kendall Cross, a senior out of Friendswood, Texas. Sophie Hannibus came in relief in the last inning. It's getting her first full inning of action here. First ball to cross is off the plate for ball one. Lady Jack's looking for a quick inning here to maybe get some momentum back on the side. That one lands fair down the right field line, and that'll be extra bases for Cross. She's digging for third. That throw, close, but called safe as that triple will get the Bears in scoring position. A really good throw into third as the tag just misses the sliding cross. Another questionable call there by the third base umpire on a close sliding play there. That one misses the plate for ball one. There are many Lady Jack fans who think that there should be two outs right now. And it was unable to find the zone so far in this at bat. With the Lady Bears catcher, LaValle. As that one comes in, just a little high for ball three. Fourth straight pitch off the plate, and that'll be a runner on first and third here with one out 
in the top of the eighth inning. Top of the sixth inning. Putting a runner on first there does open up the opportunity for a double play or at least a force out of second. Number 15, Sydney Collazos coming to the plate. As the Bears trying to get some extra experience through the roster in this midweek matchup against the Lady Jacks. Piazos came in in the last half inning on some defensive assignments. And now getting her first plate appearance here against Sophie Hannibus. Early in the season, definitely want to make sure that Everybody's getting some experience and seeing a little bit of action. Especially when you've got three games coming up against Oregon. A good Pac-12 team. You want to make sure that you can reach deep into the roster if needed in an early big matchup in the season. Hannibus unable to find the zone for ball two. That one. Low and out of the zone for ball three. Hannibus unable to find the zone in seven straight pitches. Needs to just settle down a little bit here and find the zone as the bat's not going to come off of Boyazos' shoulder. And that one in for strike one. The Baylor runner on first able to take a big lead as Govan is playing close to the plate looking to prevent a run scored from the runner on third if there is to be a ground ball. That one chopped into right field. Nguyen able to or Madero's rather unable uh, able to get underneath it and then some will send it in for scoring two in the fourth and three in the fifth. Now the 5-2 lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Hope Lust coming to the plate for her third attempt at the plate and her first chance to see pitches from number 41, I, Aaliyah Benford. Lust looking to get things started here for the home team. the bottom of the inning as she chops that into shortstop hand and that mistake won't be made again as that's how Lusk found the base pads in the bottom of the first and that'll be one quick out here as sure-handed shortstop number 18 Campbell Selman able to corral that and send it over to first for the first out and now a never easy out as Shea Govan comes to the plate with one out on the board and no one on the base pads, you have to wonder how the Baylor Bears are going to attack this with a three-run lead. They may pitch at her, but you have an opportunity to send the most lethal bat in the Western Athletic Conference to first without much harm here if you want that one out of zone for ball one. Lusk was able to get out in front of the speedy Bed Bedford. Govan looking to do the same thing here, maybe with a little bit more air under the ball. And that changeup comes in for strike one. Showing bunt, Govan. She'll do this and then she'll pull it back and then swing it as she lays off that one. The count now two and one. It seems like Benford's maybe playing the outside of the zone. If she catches a corner, she's happy, but trying to get Govan to swing at some that she doesn't need to. Govan, a veteran in the batter's box. He's going to make Benford earn it. As she chops out to third, that one corralled and sent over to first for the second out of the inning. Good job by the Baylor defense there. To keep a lethal bat and shake Govan off the base pads. Next up for your Lady Jacks, number two, Gabby Garcia. Now Gabby Garcia coming into the game. Oh. 
that one. And for strike one, as Penford gets ahead of the Lady Jack catcher, we will see a new batter to the plate for the Lady Jacks if Garcia gets on base as Sidney Abair standing in the on-deck circle. That one chopped a third as well. A good job by number 15 to make the two last plays. Sidney Coyazos making two of the three outs here in the bottom of the six. We'll head to the seventh. Here. Welcome back to the top of the seventh inning here in Nacogdoches, Texas. As Sophie Hanna is still on the mound for the Lady Jacks as pitching to number two, Taylor Strain. Strain fouls that one off for strike one. Strain, a second-year freshman out of Robinson, Texas. Playing left field. Has had a fairly quiet night on the defensive side. Has made a play or two out and left, but has looked to make an impact here at the plate as the Bears hope to see home plate just one more time here in the top of the seventh. As they'd like to extend their lead here before hopefully giving the Lady Jacks one more shot to come back into this one as that one in the zone for strike two. The count now one and two for the Baylor freshman. The one-two pitch. Chop towards short. Middlebrook will get behind it. Sends it over to first, and the play is made in time for the first out. Good veteran play there by Middlebrook. And Govon doing a good job of stretching and getting to that one. As now Emily Hot, the sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma, coming to the plate. Hot's made some good plays at second throughout the evening. As she swings underneath that one for strike one. Big cut there from Hot. Draws an ooh from the home crowd. We've seen some good pitching from what you would consider the Lady Jacks bullpen as their everyday starter, Cassidy Wilbur, had the night off. We saw a good outing from Brooke Gaines to start the game, and now Sophie Hannum is doing a good job here of closing out these last couple innings. As that one off the plate, count now one and two. That one sent straight to the glove of Emily Land, and that'll be two outs here in the top of the seventh. Emily Land has made some nice plays over there on the third base side tonight. Third base has to be a scary place to play. You're playing so far in off of the third base bag. There's not much time between the ball leaves the bat to the time it hopefully is in your glove. Some real good athletes playing on the infield here for both teams. Number 21, Mackenzie Wilson, the plate. We've seen her dangerous at the plate a couple times. She's in her first season with Baylor, a sophomore out of Long Beach, California, transferred in from Fresno State. If I'm not mistaken, it was Wilson who sent that fly ball into the corner in right field to get things going for the Bears in the top of the fifth. You would be correct, and I believe she sent it over into left field, too. I think you called that play as well, saying that the center fielder for the Lady Jacks had shaded over to the left, and Wilson took advantage, still hitting it left. The 2-1 pitch off the plate for ball three. Hannibus 
looking to see if she can get the third out here in the inning and get her Lady Jacks to the plate with just three runs down as that one misses for ball four. And that'll be a two-out walk here in the top of the seventh. Number seven, Casey West coming to the plate. West this is at a, listed as a pitcher on the roster, a freshman from Liberty, Texas. Came in as a pinch runner earlier in this game. Now getting an opportunity to take some swings in the batter's box as Wilson took a big lead after that throw. Garcia throws her just off the bag and Wilson will return to first. The 0-1 pitch. Out of the zone, that'll even the count at one ball and one strike. Garcia has got a keen eye on Wilson, who has speed heading over to second. Lady Jacks would like to send West back to the north here and back towards the dugout to end the inning. That ball off the plate. The count now two and one. Anibus gets the call from the dugout. The 2 1 pitch. Low and out of the zone for ball three. The count now 3 and 1. She'd like to get at least a swing out of West here to run this count full. The 3 2 pitch. Low and out of the zone for ball four. Wilson slides into second. Was not needed as she was given the base. And now, Benford, who we've seen all over the place tonight, starting in the infield, then going in to pitch, coming to the plate for her third plate appearance as well. The Lady Bears have used nothing but their eyes to put two runners on the bases here by way of two straight walks. Looks like the Lady Jacks are content to run this one out with Hannibus. I don't see any arms warming up in their bullpen. Hannibus has shown she's more than qualified to take this one to the house. Just has to get in front of the batters here. As that one in the zone for strike one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Missing low and inside for ball two. Just missed the bottom of the zone that pitch did. The 2-1 pitch. Chopped back towards the pitcher and just past the glove. As that'll bring home one run for the Bears. Wilson getting in, standing up, and that'll advance the runners to third and second as Baylor now extends early to 6-2 here in the top of the seventh. That liner that took a bounce before making it way to the outfield just barely made its way past the diving glove of Hope Lusk. Josie Bauer fouling that one off for strike one. Lady Jacks have found themselves in this position multiple spots tonight with two runners in the scoring position and one out away from ending the inning. That one in the zone for strike two. Hannibus working ahead of the batter. Benford and West standing on second and third. Hannibus hoping to send him back to dugout. That one off the plate. Garcia doing a good job to slide over and get in front of that one. The count now one and two here in the top of the seventh. Garcia has done a good job all night of not letting much get past her there at the plate. 
That one chopped towards short and just a little too high for the glove of Middlebrook. The tag is made at home as Middlebrook able to send that in. The Bears do get a run across. The score now 7-2 to two here. As it's been nothing up, nothing but zeros up on that scoreboard above middle right field ever since the first inning since the Lady Jacks looking for a comeback here. But Lady Jacks were able to capitalize on some mistakes by the Baylor Bears defense in that bottom of the first inning along with a great hit by Shago Vaughn. Ever since then, the Baylor defense has kept the Lady Jacks quiet and their offense sparked in the fourth, scoring two in the fourth, three in the fifth, and two in the seventh. As that one in for strike three, and that'll be the first out here in the bottom of the seventh. And now Cameron Middlebrook coming to the plate. Middlebrook made a great defensive play in the top of the seventh, stretching to keep a ball in front of her, really, that was hit over her head, unable to catch it on the initial grab, but able to throw it home to get the runner at home out to end the inning. As that one comes high and at her face, she ducks out of the way for ball one. If you're a Lady Jacks fan, now would be a time, good time to put your rally caps on as they need some runs here, not outs. As the temperatures have dropped here in Nacogdoches, we've seen some fans leave. I don't see many rally caps on, but maybe in the dugout they've got them flipped. As that one off the plate for ball two. Meadowbrook sees her third straight ball. Lady Jack shortstop doing a good job being patient in the batter's box here in this matchup with Benford. If I was Middlebrook here, I wouldn't be opposed to watching this next pitch as it can't hurt you. I doubt at this point in the season, Coach Dixon's giving many people the green light to swing on a 3-0. And as we saw, she let Benford find the zone for the first out, first strike rather of the sat bat. And that one chopped foul. Three two pitch. Swung on and hit hard towards right center field. That one back against the wall. That one hits the warning track, and she's standing up at second. Send up double here in the bottom of the seventh inning for Cameron Middlebrook. Great swing by the Lady Jacks shortstop. The best hit all night by the Lady Jacks makes its way all the way to the wall, and it comes in the time that they need it most here in the bottom of the seventh. Sydney Abear now coming to the plate for her first shot at Benford this evening getting in her first action of the night. Now the runner in scoring position with one out on the board. Coach Dixon and her squad would love to see this ball find a similar spot as Middlebrooks as Benford puts everything she has behind that one. That one out of the zone for ball one. Couldn't tell there if the catcher number 99, Zadie LaValle, was trying to throw that ball down to second base. Benford corralled it either way as that one's out of the zone for ball two. The count now two and one for Abear. Abear Jr. out of Dayton, Texas. Transfer from University of Louisiana, Lafayette. One of the best. Non-traditional big names in college softball is ULL. If you're a softball fan, you know ULL as a powerhouse, but not part of one of those Power Five conferences that you see throughout college athletics. 
Nevertheless, continue to put out championship teams year in and out. We'll see them here in Nacogdoches in a few weeks. They play a doubleheader against the Lady Jacks. As Abair gets good contact, sends that into short left, and the ball's bobbled. And Coach Dixon holds up Middlebrook at third, and now runners on first and third with one out on the board. The Lady Jacks offense coming alive here in the bottom of the seventh, trying to keep this one alive. Yeah, maybe a missed opportunity to score there as the left fielder had a little bit of trouble controlling that ball, but nonetheless advances the runner. Runners on the corners now for the Lady Jacks. Lavalley will come to the center circle and meet with... Really, it looks like Lavalley and the rest of the infield has gone and met with their head coach as the pitching coach comes out to have a conversation with Benford and Coach Dixon coming out to maybe make a substitution on the base pass. I would imagine we see Abier take a seat for a pinch runner. As we do, pinch runner coming in at first. See if we can get you that number, number 18 it looks like. Lexi Benson. Lady Jacks finally starting to get a little offensive steam going here in the bottom of the second, bottom of the seventh, excuse me. Number eight, Emily Land coming to the plate with an opportunity. You're going to keep this offensive train rolling as that ball out of the zone for ball one. Middlebrook looks poised to come home at third as Land waited on that changeup and just swinging a little too early, pulling that back towards the away dugout. If you're Emily Land, what you don't want to do here is hit it to the second base or the shortstop, potentially turning it into a double play. Good hit over the running Benson. That'll bring one run across, and the Lady Jacks now with runners on first and second as they continue this hit parade here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Not giving up here against the Baylor Bears, and now another pinch hitter, Sydney Carithers, coming in, a freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas, getting her first look at Benford. Emily Land making use of the opposite side of the field there to find some green. Land put that one just over her teammate Lexi Benson's helmet. Doing a good job of keeping that away from the first baseman. As now Carrithers coming to the plate. Two runners on the base paths. One standing on second, one standing on first. Still a four-point game, so there's still a lot of work to do. You can't change the game with one swing of the bat. You can't change the outcome, rather, with one swing of the bat. So Coach Dixon just wants to see this ball in play from Carrithers. As that one, strike one. Carithers may feel like she missed an opportunity there, but has to stay in the batter's box and battle here against Benford. The tying run right now for the Lady Jacks is standing in the on-deck circle. That one off the plate as LaValle sent that down to second. Benson able to get back in time. The count now one and one. Throw down there doesn't even draw a slide from Benson. The one one pitch. Swung way early from Carrithers and that's strike two. Expecting something with a little bit more speed on it. We've seen Benford put the whole house behind her pitches. She has a naughty changeup, though, that can get you to swing early just as Carruthers did. That one inside, I count now two and two. That one chopped back towards Benford. The play is made at first. The runners advance to second and third. Two outs now on the board. Tying run still in the on-deck circle. 
As number seven coming to the plate, Madison Nguyen. Two outs now, but with that last ball in play, it takes away the potential for a force out. So lots of room in right center field for Nguyen to send this one to. As the first pitch she sees is out of the zone for ball one. That right field, that right side of the field would be the way you would expect her to hit it, being a left left-handed batter. If it finds the wall on that right side, it could give two runners an opportunity as that one slapped down towards that left side. That's where they've got heavy defense. The left fielder playing in, really all of the or all of the outfield playing a little in. As they don't expect a ton of power to come out and win. The girls in purple and white have done a good job making things interesting here uh, in the bottom of the seventh. That one misses the zone. The count now two and one. Benford has done a good job in relief here for the Bears. Just got to battle a little bit. The two one pitch. As it seems like Nguyen's angling her bat to send this ball down the left side of the field. There just seems to be a lot more space on the right side of the field. That'll run the count even at two balls, two strikes in, two outs. Going to have to find grass in the outfield here to keep this one alive. Huge gap out there. And, and that changeup gets her, and that'll be it here in Nacogdoches. Baylor will win this one. 7-3. The Lady Jacks did a good job of coming back and putting out a lot of fight here in Nacogdoches in their home opener. We saw some exciting softball here to start the season off. 